Hi everyone, my name is Sharon, and today we're going to be talking about the science and the engineering behind rosin. Have you ever wondered, are all rosins the same? Or are there actual scientific and engineering differences that if you knew what they were and how they worked, would allow you and enable you to uh, select the best rosin for your individual setup, meaning your individual violin, the strings that you have, the environment that you're in, all of that. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, the, the science and engineering behind rosin. So I'm a violinist and I've been playing for 22 years. I perform with a few local orchestras in, in town and I also substitute with the San Antonio Symphony. Um, my background, however, is in science and engineering. My bachelor's degree was in biochemistry and molecular biology, and then my master's degree was in biomedical engineering, and then currently I'm working on my doctoral degree also in biomedical engineering. Um, I work as an adjunct professor uh, teaching university level engineering, and I also work as a researcher. All right, so let's get started. So a lot of people are under the impression that there are these kinks and burrs along a bow hair and that those are what are gripping and pulling and that's what's initiating string vibration and producing sound. However, that is not true and let me show you why. All right, so uh, here is a picture of a cross section of a hair and um, as you can see, the innermost layer is called the medulla. The next outer layer is called the cortex and then finally, the outermost layer is called the cuticle. And there is um, surface texture that you can see. Um, the cuticle is made up of keratin, which is a protein commonly found in hair and nails. So now let's look at um, a strand of hair um, a little closer. So let's look at a scanning electron microscope picture of um, horse hair used for, um, used for the bow. And um, scanning electron microscope is a very powerful um, microscope and it allows us to see very, very small details. So here you can see that there is a surface texture. However, they're not like burrs or hooks. Instead, they're closer to like scales or plates, which are like flatter. Um, and if we look at the dimensions, we can see that the height of these scales is actually around 0.5 micrometers, which is extremely tiny. And um, if you compare this to um, say like the diameter of a string, um, for violins, strings can range anywhere from 0.2 millimeters to 0.8 millimeters, depending on whether that's your E string or your G string. But um, if you compare those two, there's actually a three um, orders of magnitude difference between these really tiny scales and then the, di the diameter of a string. And so what that tells us is that um, these scales or plates, the texture of the hair contributes practically nothing. It's like negligible um, in terms of contributing to actual like pulling movement, um, string vibration and sound. And that makes sense if you've ever attempted to play with um, a freshly haired bow that has like no rosin, you get essentially no sound. All right, so now let's compare this image to another one, same thing, but now with rosin. You can see that there are tiny particles of rosin dust that cling to and around the scale. And um, also notice that the dimensions of the particle and the scale height-wise are about the same. And that's what allows the scale to grip and retain the rosin. Once the rosin is on your bow, the stickiness of it increases the friction between the strand of bow hair and your actual string. And it is that friction which allows the string to be pulled and vibrated and create sound. The reason why you need to rehair your bow is because when you play a lot, you wear out the scales on your bow and then the rosin has nothing to grip onto. So take a look at this. A bow has been divided into six sections and each of these sections were imaged under scanning electron microscope. You can see that in the second and third pictures in the upper half of the bow are close to being completely worn away. At this point, the hair has been stripped down past the cuticle layer and down to the cortex, or maybe even the medulla, where there are no scales for the rosin to cling to. And that is why in some cases, even if you rosin the bow, you still won't get any traction, and that's because there are no scales to hold on to the rosin. And so at, now at this point, I would like to, you know, for the sake of 
giving complete information to the best of my ability. Um, I'd like to include like some other information. So um, I have read some literature that claim that it is the chemical bonds between the rosin and the hair that are like what allows those two things to stick together. And what they mean by that is that keratin is a high molecular weight molecule, which means that there are a lot of atoms per molecule of rosin. Um, and because of all of those atoms, they're able to form more secondary bonds between the keratin and the rosin. I haven't been able to find a more complete description other than that, so maybe I'm just not understanding what they mean completely, um, but that explanation kind of bothers me a little bit. And the reason for that is that hair is made up of 80% keratin. And so if they claim that it's the chemical bonds between the keratin um, and the rosin, then supposedly even after you've worn away the scales on the bow, then theoretically you should still be able to have the rosin stick to the bow hair because there's still like lots of keratin. Um, but in my personal like musical experience, I can absolutely feel when my bow needs to be rehaired. Um, because even if I rosin it up, um, I still won't get any traction and it won't retain the rosin. So that's why it makes more sense for me personally to think of it from the perspective of scales, plates, and dimensional magnitude. So if you liked this video, please like, comment, share it, um, subscribe, follow my Facebook page, um, Sharon Quee Music. Um, I'm going to be uploading a couple more videos in um, a few more days. Um, so if you want to keep updated on like posts and videos, please, you know, like my Facebook page or visit my website here.